Hello there. Hi, Tracy. How you doing? It's good to see you. <laughs> I'm doing really well. It's great to see you too. I, it's been a very long time since we last chat. So I'm so glad that, that, that I have the opportunity to catch up with you. And just for anybody who, who might be watching this, I want to introduce you to a Chico State alum, Thank Mr. You. Nathan Sandoval, a, a graduate BA and MA from the Department of English. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Um, BA in English studies and the MA was in rhetoric and composition studies. Oh. under the wonderful tutelage of Tom Fox and Chris Bosin. Oh, look at there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, Nathan, the last time I saw you, you came back to campus to visit. I want to say it might have been like a Friday or something. It was like a Friday afternoon. I think everybody was gone. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember if we were over in Cisco still, if we were in a new building here. New building, I believe. New building. Yeah, just moved. That was like the first year of the new building. Okay. And at that time, I believe you had maybe just moved to Oregon mm -hmm. and you were doing like rowing. You were coaching rowing. Yeah. Yeah. I was a rowing coach um, for, well, I guess total seven years. But um, when I was up in Eugene, uh, I was coaching and um, I was also an editor uh, for Weatherbeaten, which is a literary magazine started by a few other alumni. I remember that. So if I'm if I'm recalling correctly, that was Chris Sweet, mm -hmm. Matt Scripic, mm -hmm. and was Nicholas Monroe. Nicholas was also there. Okay. Nicholas Monroe. That that was a really good group. Yeah, we uh, we enjoyed putting that together for a couple of years, a couple of um, uh, uh, editions. Um, obviously, life did happen and COVID happened and a lot of things happened between that time. But um, mainly uh, what ended up bringing me back um, was my uh, girlfriend, now fiance. Um, Congratulations. Thank you very much. That happened not too long ago. Right. Uh, still a little bit on cloud nine for that. Um, she actually ended up getting... Uh, uh, sick uh, with um, an autoimmune disease and um, she was living in Chico at the time and uh, studying as a graduate student um, at Chico State and uh, made my decision making pretty quick that I need to get my butt back down to Northern California and be closer to her and her doctors. So moved back down, reestablished myself in the rowing world and was setting up shop again, um, potentially going to either teach or do something else. Um, had a couple of different options, but within about a month of me networking and doing some um, private lessons with rowing, uh, we were actually in a, a car wreck um, and uh, hit by a drunk driver. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, kind of threw everything for a loop. So a little bit of a whirlwind because uh, I wasn't able to do my uh, rowing instruction anymore. Um, couldn't be in the launch for much longer and couldn't do the stroke or anything like that. Um, so I had to change careers pretty quickly. Um, and while I was doing some odds and ends work seasonally retail, uh, I got an opportunity with Northwestern Mutual um, to start my own financial planning practice. And they had positions open in Sacramento, which is where I am now. Um, and that's where my fiance Ashley's doctors were. So packed up everything and um, moved down um, here. And actually, crazy enough, as it were, there's actually a position open in the Chico office to start uh, managing that entire branch. Mm -hmm. So I'm flipping gears again, Tracy, and moving back up to Chico this oh, wow. summer. So full circle, crazy enough, now you know. That's what happened to me. Oh, my goodness. You know, you all have been through a lot in the last couple of years. I mean, your girlfriend getting sick or your fiance now. Yeah. Getting sick. Um, then, then the car accident. Um, you're right. I mean, so a lot, a lot of healing, a, a, lot, of re, a lot of recovery, mm -hmm. a lot of reestablishing yourselves and, and, and things. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been quite a whirlwind. I I, I will admit. But 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 it, it it looks at least from the appearance of things, and so you all are are getting back on on your on your feet. Um, yeah, um, I 
never really thought that, uh, well, she's doing really well, um, <laughs> first of all. Uh, in fact, the only reason why we're even able to move back to Chico is because uh, pending a couple of the doctor's results, she should be in remission from her uh, autoimmune disease within the next few months, which is awesome. Um, so she's well, well on her way to healing um, and uh, being clear of all that. And then for me, um, I'm still kind of in the process of healing with uh, my body from the accident. Um, but as far as business is concerned, uh, I was actually able to utilize uh, a lot of what I learned uh, through my undergrad and grad school uh, within my practice right now. Um, I teach people every day, uh, teach clients every day of how to be more efficient with uh, their own personal goals and like coaching skills translate very well um, with motivating them to basically accomplish whatever they want, um, but making it manageable and helping them see that successful version of themselves and guiding them along that process. So I've kind of leveraged a lot of things I was already kind of good at, but put it in just a different form and a different me. And then uh, now I'm able to almost grow a full beard. So I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, and, full beard. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty pretty darn close. So uh, <laughs> I figured, uh, yeah, that was a that was a good time during COVID to <laughs> to people can see just this. Uh, and um, <laughs> and, um, and, and I, I'm very grateful that um, this opportunity found me. Actually, what ended up happening, but uh, that I've been able to use a lot of my skills and transfer them to help more people out in the community. Well, that's, that's really cool and, and actually really heartening to hear that, right? You've been able to transfer some of the skills that you, you picked up um, during your course of study here, particularly your graduate student program um, where, you, where you taught uh, freshman comp or English 130 mm -hmm. uh, and, and other things and be able to, to, to sort of transfer that to right? A, a job that's not in the teaching field, but in which those skills that you developed in the classroom. Yeah, um, yeah. Do you recall what my, uh, I was really surprised if you did, but do you recall what my thesis, or not thesis, um, my, uh, uh, project? my, my, no, my, um, my syllabus, my, my theme of my 130 was. I'm, I'm sorry, I put you on the spot. But. No, tell me. Uh, so I did consumerism. And um, I've had my students uh, track their monthly expenses and create a budget for themselves. And then I remember, track... that. I remember talking with you about that during your TA interview. Yeah. You were walking us through your syllabus. And so now, look at there. You, you I do the same thing every, <laughs> every day. I do the same thing every day and um, help people get excited about what they're spending money on. So yeah. Good. And are you enjoying it? I love it. Um, it's a lot of hard work um, and it's not an hourly, you know, nine to five. Uh, so, you know, I kind of, you get what you right. get out, what you put in, um, so to speak. We just like teaching, right? It's not a nine. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the rewards is, is kind of similar where you, you don't really expect a thank you. Um, that's not really the reason why you're doing it. But when you get a thank you, oh my gosh, it goes forever it like goes so long to have someone actually reach out and say like wow without you like these things could have happened and I feel so much more confident what I'm doing I had that happen last week and I was just really down I'm just hard week and someone just said thank you so much for sticking with us and helping us out and man I can't tell you that's very very rewarding feeling <laughs> yeah I, I I can I can definitely understand right I mean um, there, there is something about being able, and I imagine in, in what you're doing, you're helping people realize dreams, mm -hmm. right? I imagine, you know, people wanting to buy a house or think about retirement and mm -hmm. all those things probably come and see you and you help them figure out a path to, to realizing that particular goal. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'll, I wasn't sure what, ex what specific questions we were going to just jump through, but, um, if we for riffing which is great i love this uh i um i know that when i first uh started um doing this i was in the middle of like their training like you know onboarding mm -hmm. and they were going through like someone was uh telling me like hey so why do we do this why do we establish a 401k versus this or something like that he was asking me a question 
And um, I said, you know, I really appreciate you asking me that way. However, the call and response measured approach to you teaching me how to do this isn't really going to work for my learning style. Um, I would really appreciate if we did scope large, you could tell me everything. And then we dive into each individual section because I think it'll be a lot faster for you. And if you want to get back to everything you were doing the rest of the day and not spend like the whole time just call response where you get really bored, could you do it that way? And he goes, oh yeah, for sure. I'm like, okay, cool. So that was cool. <laughs> I, <laughs> oh my God, you said that. And I could just hear Tom Fox and Chris Fulton and Kim Jackson in the background going, yes, Nathan, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but they, uh, they actually pegged me for um, some mentorship and leadership opportunities within the office, which is why I'm going back uh, to Chico. Um, so I'm running the internship. Uh, in the Chico office right now and actually helping college students again. So it's, you know, little things line up and you you don't really always know exactly how it's going to work out, but I can't tell you how much confidence um, teaching my own class has given me relating to, you know, either these interns at now currently, but when I was first starting recent college grads, um, who were, you know, just coming out of school and having their first career job and very unsure and kind of on edge about what to do with their life. And having worked with college students for a few years before and coaching them and also teaching, it was incredible to be able to relate to them and, and show them that these things are possible and kind of meet them at a place where they felt comfortable to start sharing those dreams and goals as well. So I learned a lot through having developing an agenda and <laughs> putting together lesson plans and just getting to know people on a one-on-one -on -one basis like we did in our graduate program. Yeah, and it seems like you're bringing not just to bear, right, what you learned in the classroom, mm -hmm. but also like some of your co-curricular or extracurricular activities because I'm also recalling, I think you were, were you president or vice president of the English Graduate Student Council? I was the president of the, oh. yeah, EGSC. Um, yeah, I I love being in, involved and in making sure that culture and experience are at the forefront. Um, I was really proud of our board, what we were able to accomplish. Putting together that English symposium is not easy. So uh, if anyone who's watching an alum who are involved in any sort of extracurricular board during your time at Chico, I know your pain, pulling teeth with some things, <laughs> some people to get things going. Um, but currently, I'm actually um, also on the board uh, for our Diversity and Inclusion uh, Council um, within Northwestern Mutual, which is the company I represent. Mm -hmm. So um, we're actively striving to continue to branch out and do a better job of adding more voices um, to our industry, but also just the clientele they're reaching out to and becoming, um, I guess, more aware of where we can be more impactful in our community or where upper, un, people are underrepresented and just need a little bit extra time to feel comfortable um, being approached by someone if they've never had the experience before in the financial services industry. So uh, I, I'm very proud of that work, um, specifically in the LGBTQ uh, area, which is the last, um, I end up leading our, um, our, 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 our excuse me, one-on-one uh, -on -one discussion um, as someone who has several uh, people who in my family um, are either queer or affiliate with uh, one of those um, gender types or non-gender binary specific uh, types. And it was, it was really interesting to, to gauge the culture of where we're at and where we're going. And it, it, I felt really um, proud of uh, being a part of Pride Month and, and being a part of the next stage, I would say, in developing awareness um, for not only our like office, but just in, in general, people just don't have exposure to. Um, so, yeah, the extracurricular stuff, I, I'm not going to stop doing <laughs> yeah. stop. You, you know, I mean, you know, I often hear people, um, particularly recruiters, um, or, or the folks who often talk about one of the things that, that's really attractive to employers about Chico State graduates, right, is that they come with 
a wealth of experience either in the classroom but also through co-curricular act activities or other high impact practices like internships and things mm -hmm. right they give them a lot of really you know um hands-on experience while they're while they're there yet um that's also coupled with the fact that they tend to be very social and, and outgoing um and also really sort of motivated by a desire to, to go out and make a positive change and it's mm -hmm. like you know you could be like a poster person right for, mm -hmm. for this in, in terms of like just listening to how right the, the sort of twists and turns that that, that your that, that your life is taken but you know how you've managed to sort of stay on the path <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, totally got it. By 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 your, your your sort of educational, your moral, your individual compass, right? To to these kinds of places. Yeah, I I will also say that within the my experience at Chico um, with my professors, um, we had a very wide, diverse array within the English department and the humanities department of uh, perspective. Not one. I, I learned several pieces of uh, my character through being challenged by those professors and whether it was you know like Nate you're smart you should probably like stop uh, you should go to class more often like I need to see you in class more often um, or it was just like this paper needs more work you, you need to you know address this or something they always were challenging me in different ways um, and you know I remember having a conversation with uh, Jeannie uh, Clark and her just saying like you need to get involved with like watershed like why haven't you done that yet like what is <laughs> stopping you from doing that and I come up with some crappy excuse of <laughs> why I was too busy or something but it was one of the best experiences I've ever had and having Sarah as a mentor um, and challenging me to get out of my shell of as a writer and um, you know that in itself uh, got me more active again in the English department and in grad school. So I don't think with, without, you know, that little string of connections, I would have taken advantage of some of the things uh, that I did um, as far as extra opportunities um, in undergrad and then translating into grad school. Um, so I'm really glad that, you know, I had that mentorship and those people who were there to kind of push me the extra mile and, I think it's kind of something you really get with the Chico experience is that closer getting to know each student and getting to see what their real potential is um, and then being okay with challenging them every once in a while. Um, it's just more real. I felt more tangible that experience right there. Yeah, you know, I mean, those kinds of things are, are a little bit harder to do right now with us being, you know, virtual. <laughs> Although, you know, people are trying to think of, of, of ways of, of being able um, to, to replicate that. But, but in some respects, I feel like that's one of, of, of our strengths, right? Um, the, the way in which we connect with students, um, that we try to push them, right? To, to, to just do a, a little better than, than, than what they did before, right? right? Um, and, and, but to do so while, while trying to provide encouragement. So I don't know, I'm, I'm curious to know, like, you talked about one of your best experiences here. Um, what about advice for um, current Chico State students or even prospective students? What kind of advice might you, you give them? Um, you know, I would say reach out to your professors early and often. Um, I know that when I was teaching to get the other side of the coin, uh, someone who came to me at the like last three weeks before you know your grade was due it was a little bit difficult to relate to them there's someone who has been communicating with me more often throughout the year um, and I'd say that goes pretty far uh, when you're in uh, the work environment too if you communicate early and often with people that are there to help um, they're able to meet you in the middle a lot a lot easier um, I know with personally my you know physical situation of being out of work, communicating what my challenges were early with my employer, um, being honest with them, you know, after signing the paperwork, obviously, to be onboarded, um, they were much more uh, willing to help me out uh, during difficult situations. So I'd say that 
you know, communicating with the people in charge and people who are there to help you early and often is really great and critical. I'd also say ask questions of what else you can do. Um, put it kind of on yourself to uh, look for those extra opportunities. They're out there. Um, I'm not just thinking of, you know, for extra credit. I'm just thinking, you know, of ways to get yourself more networked and connected in the community of what really builds you off the paper and on paper eventually when you're applying for jobs. Um, that was something I was very thankful for that I, I had to curate my resume to fit all the things I was doing. And Chico has a lot of things. I'm sure that there's going to be a whole new wave of different types of opportunity. Now that we're doing virtual stuff. Um, patience is a virtue right now, but um, being able to communicate that clearly to your employer is something that'll come very naturally. If you're already on Chico state campus, we pride ourselves in being, social and interactive, like you were saying, Tracy. Um, and I think that as long as you make the most of those opportunities and ask for more, you'll be very pleasantly surprised at what Chico has to offer from every perspective. Just depends on what you want to get involved in. Okay, that's really great advice. Really great advice. So if, if you're listening out there, you know, file that away. <laughs> Come in, in, in handy. So when's the wedding? Oh, June 2022. We haven't got a specific date yet. We're looking at venues. So it's, uh, but we're going to go a full year past. Yeah. Yeah. yeah going to wait. Sure. All this, <laughs> it's all this craziness. So. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, I just, I want, I always want to give back to Chico, by the way. So like I could literally talk about this for hours, but um, yeah, I think my uh my fiance and I we share space also like oh. we're working yeah she works with uh, children with special needs um okay. and uh and then she has to come home to work like with me so like talk to me so patience is just she's a saint I don't know how she can do that all day <laughs> well, you, like you, 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 you chose wisely yes yeah. I'm very very thankful to have her in my life yeah okay. oh my goodness it was so good to see yeah and i'm glad to know that that um you'll be back in chico yeah yeah i'm excited you'll be seeing a lot more of me on campus i'm sure once we get kind of oh, sorted you know, back okay. on campus stuff, come but. back on campus yeah. <laughs> back. yes but you will have to come by and, and see us again well, be- i will do and i'm just so so thankful that i got a chance to see you in the virtual sphere yeah, okay. i have to tell everybody I, I saw you yeah yeah please do um let's jealous, see. but you know <laughs> i don't i i can't think of any any one person that i would like really i was like trying to think of like who who to talk to like first i'm like no i want to talk to everybody like i, I want to meet everyone again again yeah. so i don't know and Virtually, I guess I can't have a virtual cup of coffee. Maybe a virtual cup of coffee. Well, you, you could. Yeah. Yeah, virtual cup of coffee with with some of the old friends. Well, all right. Well, it was it was a pleasure, and it was good to see you. And congratulations on your upcoming nuptials. Your and you know, good job on 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 the the. I, I don't shouldn't say new because you've been been doing this for a while, but you know, on a career path and helping people. Um, realize their goals and, you know, and finding a way to just sort of bring all of your, 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 your interests and your talents and your, your skills to together um, to really go out there and, and to make a change and to help make people's lives better. So, thank you, Tracy. Thank I you appreciate you guys having me. It was good to see you.